Hello everyone and welcome again to Hybrid Accounts and today we're just going to proceed with our topic uh, transportation models or transportation problems and today we're just going to look at the new method called voltage approximation method. Before this uh, I would like to remind you one thing. I would just like to remind you one thing that uh, we usually have three different methods, right? Yeah. We have three different methods which are here. Let me show you these are methods. We have three different methods. That is the least cost method, Northwest corner method, as well as the Rogers, these ones. We have these three methods. In the previous videos, uh, we took a look at the Northwest corner method as well as the least cost method. And now we are just going to the Rogers approximation method. So let's just go there directly. All right, here we are. Voltage approximation method. Now, what is the voltage approximation method? It's just an improvement of the least cost method. So, first of all, we apply a new concept called penalty, on the, and then we, we, we proceed as if we are just doing the least cost method. It's just like that, it's just a combination. So, it is also called a penalty method, and it is an improvement of the least cost method, thus giving a better initial solution. So, we obtain a better initial solution using the approximation method compared to the least cost method, unless the question is very easy that they give the same result. So, why does it give a better solution? It's because it capitalizes on opportunity cost in order to make allocation to various cells. So it makes use of an opportunity cost. You know, let's say that, you know, when speaking of the least cost, you can say that if I have a cost of three and a cost of five, I would choose a cost of three. But what if I have a cost of three, which, I, which if I fail will be a cost of six, but also I have a cost of five, which if I fail will be a cost of 20. I would go to the cost of five because if I fail to achieve that, I would have to incur 20, which is 15 more, while from the cost of three to six, the difference is just three. So we get a picture of how voltage approximation method is useful. All right, now the following are the steps. So first of all, before doing anything, you usually have to say that you have to balance the problem, right? Total supply should be equal to total demand, and then we start with the procedures here. So, first of all, compute penalties for each row because if you call the penalty method, so compute penalties for each row and column. Then, how do we obtain? How do you obtain uh, that penalty? The penalty is very simple. It's just the difference between two minimum costs in cells of that row or column. So it's just easy. You just take the, min the difference between two minimum costs. You have a given row, you take two minimum costs, you list them. You have a column, take minimum cost, you list them. In a given row or column, I'm repeating again. Don't worry, you're just going to take a look at this example here, but I would like us to learn the steps first. So here we are. After that, Select, we just got the least cost method now. Select the row or column with the highest penalty because the penalty is selected for, penalties are computed for all rows and all columns. So select the row or column with the highest penalty. You know, something with the highest penalty is something that should be given priority because if we fail to use it, we could actually incur that penalty. So to avoid incurring the highest penalty, we select the row or column with the highest penalty and then allocate units in the cell with the least cost in that selected row or column. So the first point is highest penalty, row or column, and then among those, just go and choose the least cost cell and actually make an assignment there, All right? And so suppose maybe uh, you have two cells or three, two or more cells with the same list cost. We just go back to the method, list cost method. So if there is a tie in the penalties, select one where the row. All right, let's start with the penalties. Imagine that uh, you have the penalties which are the same. Let's say row one and row three and the column one have the same penalties. No problem, just consider all the elements in all those cells and take the one with the least cost. So if there is a tie in penalties, select one where a row or column contains the minimum unit cost. In case uh, you are selected uh, and you have the same minimum unit cost, maybe the first row has a certain unit cost and the second row 
has also that unit cost that is minimum, where should you allocate? Now to do that, we say, if there is a tie, select one where maximum allocation can be made. This is just the specialist cost method. Don't worry, we're just going to uh, take a look at an example. Then after that, it's just a uh, downhill, just, just easy. So you just say delete the existed row or column because you will have made an allocation. If you make an allocation, it's either a row or a column will vanish, or both of them will vanish if they are having the same quantity. All right. Then after that, you repeat the steps. So we just say that, repeat the steps, repeat step one to step three until all allocations are made, and lastly, obtain the initial basic feasible solution that cost. So let's go and take a look at this very, very useful example so that uh, you feel very, very much stable. All right. So we are told that the cost of transportation per unit from resources and four destinations are given in the table below. These are transportation cost on a per unit basis in a thousand dollars. So here we have sources, source one, source two, and source three. Then source one can supply, these are the supplies of those sources. Source one can supply 450 units, source two can supply 250 units, and source three can supply a total of 350 units. And we have destination. Destinations are the ones that require that demand. Uh, this, the destinations, they, they demand units from the source. So the source supplies units to the destinations. So destination one demands 250 units. Destination two demands or requires 300 units. Destination three requires 200 units, while destination four requires 300 units now. If you sum them, take a look here, 250 plus 300 is 550 plus 200, 750 plus 300, 1050. And for the supplies, we have 450 plus 250, which is 700 plus 1050. So we say that this problem is balanced. In case the problem isn't balanced, you can just go to the previous videos uh, to take a look on how to balance the problem. So before starting our method, you have to make sure that the problem is balanced. Now, required, what are we required to do from the question? The question requires us to uh, obtain, obtain initial basic feasible solution using the Rogers approximation method. We just need the solution. This is solution, not solutions. Solution using the Rogers approximation method. All right, so first of all is to check on whether the problem is balanced or not. In our scenario here, the problem is balanced because our total supply equals to total demand, as you see here. Total supply equals to total demand, which is equals to 1,050 units. So no problem, right? Now this is our question. I just copied it. So you say the problem is balanced. If the problem is balanced, then we are ready to start applying our Voyager's approximation method, or in other words, the penalty method. All right. Now, as I told you, you have to go for each row and each column to determine the penalty. If you start with row one, which is source one, source one is here. So just check this one. Source one at the cost of four, two, seven, and three. I said that the penalty is the difference between the two unit costs, right? Minimum. Minimum cost is, is two, and then it is three. So three minus two equals to one. So we have the penalty here, three minus two equals to one. For the second row here, so it's two, minimum is two and then three. So three minus two again, another difference equals to one. Just take the difference, no need to move to put plus or minus. And then for the three, we have 10, we have four, we have three, we have one. So we have one into the list and then we come to three. So three minus one and we have two. So this is how we go about this, right? All right, so we proceed down here. We go to the columns. And for the columns, for destination one here, we have cost of four, three, and 10. So the minimum is three followed by four, so four minus three. I'm repeating again. In case here it was three and here three, you just take three minus three, not say they all oh, they are equal and delete them. You just take the, the, the difference, even if the numbers are equal. And for destination two, the minimum is two and then four because this is seven so four minus two you remain with two and then you go to destination three we have seven two and three so minimum with two followed by three and then three minus two we have one and lastly is for destination four uh, we have three 
eight and one. So minimum is one followed by three. So three minus one and we have two. So this is how we determine the, our penalties. Now, to make an assignment, you choose a row or column with the highest penalty. Now, taking a look at here, the highest penalty is number two. Number two, but number two is on source three. Number two is on destination two, but also number two is on destination four. So it is existent in several items. Now, what do I do? So since they are both the largest, you start this destination two, check the element. We have four here, I highlight it. We have seven here, I highlight it. And then we have two here, I highlight it. Then we have destination four. We have the element, let's highlight all the elements to make matters easier for us, but although it's not a must, I highlight it. And then we have a uh, so three, which is as also a penalty of two. So I, I, I highlight one, already highlighted. I highlight three here, already highlighted. I highlight four already, and then I highlight 10. So among these unit calls that I have highlighted, I have to make an assignment to the least cost. What is the least cost now? The least cost by comparison here is one. So I do not just go and take, take at the least cost, no. I just take one in the list, but even if, if one was not highlighted, I would not have considered it. So you really have to be careful on when, uh, on how to deal with this one. So, because one is also highlighted and it's the list cost, then I would choose here, and that's why I made an allocation here. So, to make an allocation here, just compare. Destination 4 required 300 units, but from destination 4 can be supplied with only 350 units from source 3. So, how much would they, would they get? You actually have to take the list of these because... Uh, I need 300, but there are 350, so no problem. I'll get all the 300. Then destination four won't need any more supply, so it will be exhausted. And so three will have supplied 300, and so it will have remained with 50 units. So after doing that, uh, it's either the source or destination will have vanished, will be exhausted, or both of them. But for our case here, we clearly see that destination four is totally exhausted because there is no need. So I draw the diagram again. I draw this uh, tabular presentation again, but with destination four being eliminated, right? That's why I said delete column four. By delete column four, I meant delete destination four. So it's just as easy as that. So if you, if you come and consider this one, now see. There is no destination four, it's only destination one, two, and three. If for destination four, I'm done. So I proceed. You repeat again, you determine your penalties again. So to determine the penalties again, uh, you just start with source one, the list cost is two here, because we have four, two, and seven, so the list is two, followed by four. So four minus two, we have two. And for source two, we have three, seven, and two. So the list is two, followed by three, so three minus two. As for source 3, we have 10, 4, and 3. So the difference is just 4 minus 3, because the list is 3 followed by 4. And then we'll repeat for the name, for the columns, all right? I think there won't be any difference for the columns because there was no effect, but we just check. So 4, 3, and 10, uh, we start with 3, then 4, so the difference is 1. Here, 2, 7, and 4, the difference between uh, 2 and 4, we have 2. And then here, seven, two, and three, the difference between three and two, and we have one here. So it's just like that. So after having completed this, uh, you again go for the highest penalty. What is the highest penalty now? It's two. Here we have two on destination two, but also we have two on source one. So uh, we have to compare these two. So destination two has these elements. Destination two has four. Destination two has seven but also this nature two has two. And as for this one, uh, for source one, uh, we, we have the cost of seven, highlighted, cost of two already highlighted, and the cost of four again. So uh, I highlight them. So you just take the least cost among those. If you take a look there, uh, you will find out that 
I have two here, which is the list. So two is the list, and I will go for these two. I will use two. So even if this was one, I wouldn't have chosen it. So I will go here. That's why I assigned here. Destination two requires 300 units, but actually it can be supplied with four. There are four 450 units available from this one. So since they need it only 300, it will receive 300 units. It won't need any more units. And uh, so Swan supplied 300 units from 450 units. So Swan remain with 150 units. And again, destination two is now exhausted because it is no longer existent. It no longer needs anything from the sources. So I repeat again by drawing this diagram, but I eliminate destination three. Sorry, I eliminate destination two here. That's why I say delete column two. By column two here, I meant destination two, sorry. So our new look diagram won't be having destination two, as you see here. And you really, as you really saw here, so Swan now has 150 units, no longer 450. So if you take a look at so Swan, you will find out that it has 150 units. So you proceed again, just as usual. You determine the penalties first. So as for source one, we have four and seven only, so the difference would be three. And then we have three and two for source two, the difference of which is one. If for source three, we have 10 and three, the difference of which is seven. And then we go to the columns. And for the column, we have four, three, and 10. So the list is three followed by four, the difference is one. As for our uh, destination three, we have seven, two, and three. So the list ones are two and three, you take the difference and you have one. Again, you determine, you identify the highest penalty. Now the highest penalty is clear, it's just one. It's on one row, I mean. It's seven. Seven is on source three. So since it is on source three, you consider the elements in source three, which are, here we have three cost, cost unit cost of three and unit cost of 10. Which is the list? The list cost here is three. So I assign here. I assign on this cell. So if you take a look here, destination three needs 200 units, but the source three can only provide 50 units. So no way. It will have to receive those 50 units. And then for three will be exhausted while the section three actually uh, will have received 50 units. So the need will reduce from 200 to 150. As usual, you delete the exhausted row or column. And now what is exhausted here? So three is exhausted because there is no longer no more need here. So a uh, new look diagram here, I said delete row three, meaning that delete uh, source three. So, uh, so three won't, will no longer appear. I'll have destination one and three and source one and source two. Just look here. I think you see it here. Yeah, so this is what we do. You proceed with the process. Penalties again. So here I have a penalty of four, sorry, cost of four and seven only. So seven minus four equals to three. Don't worry on how we approach this. Uh, on later stages, you learn to do this. You can learn to do this in just a single diagram. We are just learning here. So as for source two, we have three and two. Three minus two equals to one. And then I count the columns, four and three. Four minus three equals to one. They are just, they are just two, then you just deduct them. Seven minus two equals to five. Sorry, seven minus two equals to five. And they, as usual, determine the highest penalty. What is the highest penalty now? The highest penalty is five. So if since it's five, you just compare the elements in this destination three. We have seven there co as cost, and we have two as cost. The list one is two. So I assign on this one. One source two, destination three. So just take a look. Destination three requires 150 units, but source two can provide 250. So they are sufficient. So destination two will receive to 150 units. Its needs I will be over, so it will be exhausted. And so two supplied 150 units from 250, so the two has a balance of 100 units. So by this, we say that destination three is exhausted. So we just remain with destination one, 
n plus 1 and 2. That's why I say delete column 3, meaning that delete destination 3. So it's just like that. Now, as you see here, destination 1 and plus 1 and 2. Now, listen to me carefully. In case you are doing the question and you remain with just a single row, a single destination, or a single source, there is no need to continue using this method. That's why I said no need because you would always have, since we, we usually balance the problem before anything, it's obvious that since destination is just 250, it will obviously receive from both sources to have that 250. So there is no need to compute penalties here. First of all, you cannot determine the penalty because this is a loan, but actually there is no need. So you just assign. You just say that uh, source one can provide, can supply 150. So it supplies 150 to destination one, and source two can supply 100. So it supplies 100 here. So source two is exhausted. The total of which uh, comes to 150 and 100 is 250. And that's why you say that the destination will no longer be in need of any units. So it's just like that. So uh, this is just a summary. I just put a summary here of all allocations in one table. And don't worry, when you are used to this, you do not need to draw the diagrams every time you exhaust a row or column. You can do it all on the same diagram. For example, here, you could have said, oh, I have penalty. You just compute the penalty, you cancel it. Another penalty, you cancel it. Whenever you repeat, you just proceed with the, with the new penalty. So no need to draw the diagram every time. So this is just a summary of all allocations in one table. So it shouldn't be a problem to you. You just, I just copied the initial, the, my, my, I just copied my question and just check here, for example. So one to destination one was 150 units here. Source one to destination one, 150 units. I just copied them all. Source two destination one is 100 units. Source two destination one is 100 units. So you just proceed and copy everything up there. If you come to this next table here, we say 150 units were from source two destination three. Source two destination three, 150 units here. Source two destination three, 150 units. You proceed uh, until you complete everything. If you go up again, uh, we say that uh, here, source one destination two is 300 units. Then uh, source three destination four is 300 units again. And then lastly, yeah, I think this was the case. So this was the case, so we could go down there and check. Let's just go down there and check everything. And here, so three destination three to 50 units. So you just go and copy them down there, nothing new. So here we are. All these units we just copied from above there, all right? So after doing this, uh, this will be the, the actual look of your solutions. Now, to determine the total transportation cost, by using uh, the voucher's approximation method, how would you approach this? It's just easy. You just take a look here. You have your sources and you have your destinations. So you just copy. For example, here we see from source one to destination one, which we transferred 150 units. Each unit was transferred at a cost of four, 4,000. Actually, the costs were in thousand. So uh, here, source one to destination one, I transferred 150 units, each cost having $4. So we just do like this. Sorry, were the costs in a thousand or not? Let's just take a look at the costs. Yeah, I didn't check. Oh, yes, the costs were only a thousand basis, right? You do, do you see here the costs were only a thousand basis? So we presume that your costs are also on a thousand basis from the solution. These costs here are on a thousand basis. I just didn't put a thousand, but they're on a thousand basis. You proceed again. So one goes to destination two. So one to destination two is 300 units, each unit at $2. Each unit at $2. So I just take 300 units times $2, I get 600. And you proceed. We have source two. Source two to destination one, 100 units at $3. Source two to destination three, 150 units at $2. So you put them all down here. 
First two destination one, 100 units at $3 per unit, we have 300. Then first two destination three, 150 units at $2 per unit, and we have 300. Then we keep proceeding as for so three, uh, we are given here, so three, so three to destination three, it's 50 units at $3. And uh, so three to destination four, it's 300 units at $1. So we just, sorry, sorry. We just add them here and then uh, everything gets settled. Yeah. This is what you would have to do here uh, to get uh, our result. Now you sum them. If you add those to 3600 plus 600 plus 300 plus 300 plus 200 plus 300, you have 2300. All right. So that's what uh, you really need to do. Now, the question is over is for the project approximation method, but I would just like you to understand one thing. You know, the three solutions, we usually call them initial basic feasible solution, right? I'm repeating again, we call them initial basic solution. They are not the true solutions. That's why usually this method could give you different results. Least cost method, project approximation method, and not with corner method. Now, to determine the real solution, which is not uh, actually involved, we're not involved with it right now, we, we usually check for degenerates. What is degenerates? We say that degenerates is something that prevents us from reaching the optimal solution. So, in order to determine the optimal solution, which we are not going to learn in this video, we usually have to eliminate degenerates if it is there. How do I eliminate degenerates? I just compare these two. There is no degenerates if n equals to n plus n minus one. What is n? n is the number of allocations. How many allocations did I make? One, two, three, four, five, six. Or you can just see them from the table here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. This is what are is the number of allocations. So that's why I say n equals to six. And what is m when n? M when, m when n is just the number of rows and columns. So that is easy. You can just determine them from, from the beginning of the question. We had three sources here, and we had four destinations. So it is three and four. So you could just say maybe m equals to number of rows, let's say, a number of columns. So if you plug them here, we we'll have three plus four minus one which equals to six. So six equals to six. So because six equals to six, we say that there is no degenerates, right? In case they were different, there would be degenerates and they would have to eliminate it before going further. So this is what I will usually do. That's why we say in case we had to determine the optimal solution, we would go straight away for the optimal solution method. In, in our case, we usually use the stepping stone method. And that's why you need to know that. Although for this case, that wasn't important because uh, if you just go back here from the very, very beginning, I listed all the steps that you need to follow. Steps in a transportation problem are these ones. After obtaining solution, you check for degenerates and then you resolve degenerates if it is there and then you go for optimality. So I was just, we just learned how to resolve degenerates in that case. But as for now, all you need to know uh, is uh, how to reach this solution here by Roger approximation method. This one, this one is very, very important. So uh, you should be very careful uh, when dealing with something of this nature. All right, thank you very much for being with us. And if you hope to subscribe to the channel, you can subscribe for regular updates. Then until next time.